Welcome back, Pet Parent. I'm so excited you're joining me today on the Pet Parenting Reset. I am Jessica Fisher. If you are new here, thank you so much uh, for joining. Today we are talking about, I'm actually just giving you an update on some of the things I'm doing with my dog, Kimberly. So we had the animal biome gut health test done, as well as the Glacier Peaks life stress wellness scan. So these two tests, I'm going to tell you what they are, let you know exactly what you can expect from each one of them, give you a brief overview of what Kimberly's results were, my dog, and what our next steps are moving forward, how we're utilizing, we, meaning me and my husband, mostly me, <laughs> utilizing these results to inform how we are moving forward with her food and environment and the things we are going to be changing or maybe what we're not going to be changing. So that's what today's episode is all about. I can't wait to tell you all about it. So let's get started. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. So I'll just you know, let you know right up front with these two tests, I will have the links in these show notes. You'll also be able to find the information on my main website, jessicalfisher.com. And know that going into these two tests, I really didn't think that we were going to find much on them. I really thought Kimberly was pretty darn healthy, uh, didn't really see any issues with her. So I wasn't really expecting to get life-shattering results. And I think that's why the results we did get were so shocking to me and why I wanted to bring this information to you. Because while both of these tests I highly recommend for any dog or cat that is experiencing symptoms of poor health, whatever that poor health may be. And we will talk a little bit more about that later on in the episode, I went ahead and I did these tests with my dog, Kimberly, for two reasons. One, she's, as far as we know, nine years old. And I say as far as we know, because I'm kind of going off of how old she, we were told that she was when we adopted her from the rescue. So nine years old, and this is, she's getting into her senior years. I want to make sure that I am supporting her in these senior years as best as I can. Of course, we always want to support our dogs and our cats and make sure they're healthy and thriving throughout their entire lives. But I found that, you know, as they get older, we need, we need some help a lot of times figuring out exactly what it is we need to be doing to, to help and support our pets because things change very rapidly in the senior years for both our dogs and our cats. And so uh, the second reason that I went ahead and did both the animal biome gut health test and the Glacier Peaks life stress wellness scan, I think I think I have those words in the correct order. It's the, the Glacier Peaks scan is what people call it, um, is because I am almost done with my certification. This I don't, you may or may not know this depending on how long you've been following me, almost done with my certification for becoming a a pet health coach, a holistic pet health coach. And these two tests, I find that um, when I am learning something, learning by doing is how I learn best. So I wanted to put all of this information into practice. Now I have been putting it into practice. I've, I have clients that I work with. In fact, I have um, a beautiful pit bull and a, an English bulldog, uh, both that have serious, serious, serious skin issues going on, um, yeast, all kinds of nasty, nasty things. And uh, so those are the two dogs that I am working with as part of my 
studies. Um, and it has been, I, I have been absolutely amazed at once we do these tests and we, we get the results and we implement changes, like seeing the changes in these dogs has been absolutely incredible. Like, I mean, I'm just through the moon, to the moon, through the roof, whatever, um, turn of phrase you want to go with. It has been incredible. So for my dog, Kimberly, who I thought was healthy, um, and, and she is, let's, let's be real. She is healthy. Uh, but I, I wanted to see exactly how I would implement something with my dog, because I feel like for me, I learn best by doing. So I'm doing with my own dog to see exactly what can be done. And even with a, an otherwise healthy dog who really has no symptoms of, you know, disease or not being healthy is there are still things that I can be doing. And I've already started implementing to help her truly thrive. So let's talk about these tests and what are these tests? So the Glacier Peaks Life Stress wellness scan. It is through a company called Glacier Peaks and it tests, it uses a saliva sample as well as a hair sample to test for imbalances with over 300 different, there are foods, there are um, miscellaneous items, they call it, I'm looking at my, my results, um, chemicals, environmental chemicals, insects, weeds, flowers, grasses, trees, pollens, dust. Uh, there are so many, many things that this scan tests for imbalances with. Now, I was surprised with all of the things that my dog has imbalances with. And because she doesn't have any real clinical symptoms, some of, you know, some of these things we can we can look at and see, okay, maybe she doesn't even have real life, like she's not in, con like one of the things th that she has an imbalance to is kangaroo. I have no idea when she has even ever had kangaroo. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, you know, fortunately for us, I don't, I don't think I even have access to kangaroo or wouldn't know where to get it. So it's not like I'm going to be feeding her kangaroo. Um, so that's something to just kind of be like, oh, that's interesting, right? But there are other things on this test, uh, the test results, that she is sensitive to, according to the test, such as spinach, sweet potato, um, salmon oil. Now, that's a big one, right? Now, one of the things that I have recently learned is that more and more dogs are becoming sensitive to salmon oil because it is very trendy. It is like a staple in dog food. Cat food, possibly, but definitely dog food. It has become a staple in making a lot of commercially available, uh, commercially available dog food. So a lot of dogs are becoming sensitive to it because of that. Now, what am I going to do with the results of this Glacier Peak test? Well, considering my dog really has no symptoms, I could say, hmm, that's interesting and not do anything. What instead I plan on doing is just for three weeks, removing all of these items that she's sensitive to based on this test result. It's it's not going to be difficult. There's not a whole lot on here that I even have to like consider. Chicken, um, chicken eggs, broccoli, carrots, spinach, salmon oil, shellfish, cheese, pasteurized dairy. Those are going to be the big ones. Now, for three weeks, this is not going to be difficult. I can remove these items from her diet for three weeks and just see how she does. Does she have more energy? Does she feel better? Are her poops better? Right? Like, how is she less gassy? There are different things that I can look at just to see, hey, is she doing better? And then add these things back in, preferably one at a time after the three weeks is up. And then is is she is she doing okay is she doing worse right so we can by process of elimination find out if these things truly are affecting her or not and so that's what i plan on doing with this even though as i said she seems like a perfectly healthy dog 
I know that there are things that I can do better to help her thrive. So let's move on to the animal biome gut health test. So with this test, it is a fecal sample that you send in to animal biome. And what they do is they measure all of the bacteria from the gut in, in your dog or cat. And I've, I've done this with a couple of my cats as well. And basically it tells you if there's a bal if the gut microbiome is balanced or if there is an imbalance. And what I found, and I, and you will actually hear me talk about this a little bit more in next week's episode with Billy Hookman, is that raw fed dogs in general, and this is something that Animal Biome has found out with the over 50,000 animals that they have tested the gut microbiome of in the past handful of years, raw fed dogs need more fiber. And the best way to get more fiber is through the introduction of more vegetables. One other thing that the test told me, because she has, she has an imbalance. She has, um, they, there are lots of different bacteria <laughs> that are present in the gut, and that is fine. There are certain bacteria that are seen in much higher levels because she doesn't have enough fiber in her diet. Now, I, if, if you've been following me, you know I, I rotate brands and proteins. Uh, she eats commercial, commercially made uh, raw, a raw food diet. We rotate brands. We ro rotate proteins. And goat's milk, raw goat's milk is also a staple of her diet. So she, she needs more fiber and digestive enzymes. So if digestive enzymes is something you're not familiar with, you've never heard of before, that is okay. I understand it's not super popular vernacular at the moment, though I think it's going to be coming. It's going to be coming. Like we're going to be hearing about digestive enzymes a lot more, I think, soon as we start learning more because it's the, the gut microbiome right now is very, very popular to talk about. So the more people learn about it, the more people break it down and figure out exactly what is good and not so good about their pet's gut microbiome. I think we're going to be hearing a lot more about digestive enzymes. So for me personally, I thought, well, she ate real food. Like she ate, she was, or she eats real food. She eats a balanced raw food diet. Why would I need to supplement that? If, especially if I'm not seeing any issues, why would I need to add digestive enzymes? Why would I need to add anything really to it? The only thing I typically added to it was her um, transfer factors from Vengeance and what, what I call her multivitamin, but they're um, transfer factors made from bovine colostrum. And I actually did see a big difference in her when I added that in. And so I thought, great, we're doing wonderful. So she definitely needs more digestive enzymes based on the bacteria that is and is not seen in her gut sample, in her fecal sample. So we need to add vegetables. We need to add digestive enzymes. Now, I am the kind of person who does not want to supplement if I don't have to, as I've already said. If I can use whole foods, real foods, to supplement my dog or my cat, that is my preference. So I looked at green juju because I know they provide uh, three different vegetable blends that are, between the three of the vegetable blends, you're going to get over 30, or I'm sorry, you're going to get over 17 different vegetables to rotate between when you feed your dog or cat, these green juju vegetable blends. So I knew off the top of my head, this is going to be the best way for me to add vegetables to my dog's diet. And I'm, I'm specifically talking about my dog, Kim, because she is not a fan of eating vegetables. If I put vegetables on her plate, she will eat around them. I have to actually mix veggies into her meat, into her raw food to get her to eat vegetables. So the easiest way to do that is through a veggie blend. So I went to Green Juju. Well, I went to my local pet store and I had Janet, my friend who owns Pupology, um, who is a co-host on the Pet Health Junkies podcast. If you haven't checked out 
my other podcast called Pet Health Junkies. Why not? Make sure to, after this episode, you search Pet Health Junkies and follow that podcast as well. I have two co-hosts on that podcast. And so Janet is one of them. She owns Pupology, which is my local um, healthy pet store. I went to her and I said, I need to order some green juju. And while I was looking through the green juju website, <clears throat> and I started going back through some of the talks on the green juju Facebook and Instagram page, they also have a product called BAMS Beets. And BAMS Beets is wild fermented beets and red cabbage. Now, what is special about this is that because it is fermented, one, we have removed the sugars, so you don't have to worry about the sugar component of the beets. But two, it is naturally full of digestive enzymes. So I already give Kim Green Juju's um, raw goat's milk. That is her breakfast every morning. So I found a company that really resonates with me and my dog and where we are at right now. They are providing loads of products. Well, they actually don't have a huge SKU list, um, but all of their products are incredibly beneficial and serve real life purposes in the health of my dog. So I ordered the BAMS beets and I ordered all three veggie blends. And by the way, these, the veggie blends come in what people have, I have recently found. They're like, when I posted a video, uh, I did a reel um, on my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's just the pet parenting reset. You can find me there. Um, they're like, what are those ice cream containers? <laughs> they look like ice cream containers or like cardboard circular ice cream containers. And um, that's what the veggies come in. So I have a small dog, but even if you have a large dog, you're not feeding a ton of these veggies. So I thaw it and then I refreeze it in little molds so that I have portions that I can thaw for my dog to eat. One one of these little containers is going to, for my small dog, is going to last a long time. So uh, thawing them and then refreezing them in little molds has been really, really excellent. That way I can easily rotate between the three blends and get all of these different veggies into her diet so that she's getting the fiber that she needs to increase the diversity of the bacteria in her gut microbiome and the digestive enzymes to help her body um, digest all of the food that she is eating. So I, that, that turned out to be a much longer story than I anticipated it to be. <laughs> but that's basically what we're doing. That's how I'm changing. That's how I'm using the results of this test with my dog, Kim. Now, moving forward, I do plan on retesting her gut microbiome in about, I'm still in the air if I'm going to do 60 or 90 days. We'll see. Either 60 or 90 days. I'm going to retest because I need to know if what I'm doing is working, right? And how better to do that than to retest. And then I will be able to see where the bacteria levels are in her gut? Am I closer to a balanced gut? Is it balanced, right? That would be ideal for it to be balanced. Um, so the, the animal biome gut health test can tell me that. So I will be retesting her in either 60 or 90 days, depending on how I feel, <laughs> honestly. Um, so that's, that's kind of where we're at. I wanted to introduce these tests to you and let you know how I'm using them, even with a dog who otherwise seems very healthy. Obviously, I have learned there is more than I can be doing to make sure she is thriving. And that's what I want for her, especially, I mean, obviously throughout her entire life, I want, we, we all want our pets to be thriving. But as she gets into her senior years, which is where she is headed right now, I want to make sure I'm doing everything I possibly can to make sure that she is as healthy as she can be, that her body is in really great shape. One other, you're going to hear some more in next week's episode with Billy um, about how we can support our senior dogs as, as it relates to my dog, but it actually translates to every dog because there are, there's so much more than gut health, though that is where we need to start. 
for sure. Um, we talk about muscle wasting and some different things in next week's episode. So make sure if you're not following the podcast that you hit that follow button. That way, every time a new episode launches, it will show up in your podcast library. And uh, every, every Tuesday, every Tuesday morning, you're going to get a new episode. So check your library every Tuesday morning and listen in. With that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's episode. I hope that was um, helpful for you. And if you need more information about either one of these tests or um, just how to support your animal, your pet, wherever they are right now, whether they are healthy or unhealthy, please reach out to me because I am, this is my passion, right? This is, this is what I do. I love our animals so much that this is what I've devoted my life to learning about and uh, bringing you information about. And I am going to be um, offering pet health coaching services in the very, very, very near future. So reach out to me because within probably a week or two of this episode launching, um, those services are going to be available. If you need help, that is what I'm here for. So with that, I'm going to say thank you again for being here. Please give your pets some extra love from me today. And until next week, bye guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh.